Hey, you guys been watching watching along with the pig buildings, pig lot building in the house and since we put the fence up, now we're hooking up the fence charger. Uh, just putting the finishing touches up. I had to run to town and get me a new ground rod because I um, couldn't find my old ground rod. And then as soon as we walk down here, we find it. But that's the way it goes. Um, this is probably going to be a better ground rod system anyway. Um, so, yep. As you can see, we'll have the charger right inside. Right inside here to keep it, the weather out off of it. So I'm going to drive this ground rod in. I'm not a um, carpenter at all. And this was a six foot rod when we started. I pushed it in a lot by hand. Actually, that might be a better, better deal there anyway. Scratch that. That didn't work very well. I'd say that's far enough. Uh, that was a six foot rod when I started, so I got five foot in the ground. You know, give or take a little. So now what we need to do is went to the Rural King, Rural King in Bedford. Uh, love that place. I'm not gonna say we buy 100% of our stuff there because we do like the local hardware stores and. The small guys too, but we picked this up at Rule King. Um, just a little ground ground clamp. It'll go on the ground rod, and then you put your ground wire here. Then it goes up to the charger. And I'm not real sure because I've been watching several other videos on fences, electric fences, and I thought I knew a lot about electric fences, and it turns out I don't. Um, I always thought electric fences cost a lot of money to run, but they don't. They don't actually cost anything to charge a fence. What what when it zaps, it cut breaks the current, and that's when it charges, or that's when your cost comes into. So after you have your pigs trained to the fence, you know the pigs the pigs extremely smart. They get shocked a couple times they know not to get on that fence so after that you're training getting them trained to it there's nothing really to running an electric fence that don't use that much electricity um so i never thought in my life i'd be an electric fence farmer but we're figuring it out and you know there's a lot of good to it uh, so i'm gonna get this put on and then Try to run some wire to it and see where we get. And as you can tell, uh, a f every farm, homestead, it don't matter really what you are, a good bucket is worth a million bucks. So, so I don't have to drag the toolbox everywhere. I just grab a bucket, load it up. And, head to the particular job I'm working on. Okay, I didn't know it did that. 
And the one tool I need, I did not bring with me, but we can we'll tie that together later. Yeah, I guess if we turned it like that, that would keep our ground wire closer to the building. Or on the inside, maybe we'll less likely to get with a weed eater or something as it you can tell i'm not real big on keeping this area weed eater but one day i will Seems like no matter how prepared you think you are in gathering your supplies, you're always going to forget something on the other side of the homestead. <laughs> so we're going to make a trip up to the carport and hunt down some more tools. Yeah. Hey guys, as you can tell, I got my uh, hot shot charger mounted on the wall and I've got my ground system all ran. Now I'm about to run, take my Romax wire and run from the hot side of the charger across the top down and hook onto the fence to energize the fence um so that's where we're at stripping back the hot side on this real mix because that's what we're going to energize the fence with uh, originally i planned on just using wire the same fence wire and running it through these um, insulators I nailed up yesterday. And then on the way home from church today, I just got to thinking, you know, I don't need to do that if I use Romex wire because it's self-insulated. So I can run it and just, just make it look cleaner, um, I think. But we'll figure it out.
you see me look up there i was just making sure that i you got three wires in here you got a power neutral and your ground and over there we use the bare wire for the ground when we hook the ground system up uh now we're going to use the black as our hot and we'll bring it in here tie it to this wire here that will make this wire hot um and then we'll run a jumper wire from here to we'll tie all three strands together um but i've looked up at the charger to make sure i use the black up there because if you used the white up there and put the black here you wouldn't get nothing so i just double checking myself here um in this slop trough that we're going to use it's got this extra mounting bracket i don't know what what it mounted to but um as you can see it's in my wire way of my wire so we're just going to take this saw off and cut this off that's probably at least half inch steel so it's going to take a little bit so we'll get through it good milwaukee sawzall and good milwaukee sawzall blades <laughs> Hey guys back to the electric fence here um i think my charger's not very good but i don't know how old it is it was used when i bought it uh it's a premier one um hot hot hawk five so i mean it's probably got some age on it and uh, tomorrow i'll go replace it i'll go down to the uh, feed store down there at Medora and get me another one Bundy Brothers and Sons get another French charger hopefully that's it but I've double checked my grounds I double double checked the connection up there still can't get nothing here at the fence maybe I just need to get brave enough and grab it but that ain't gonna happen we got the fourth wire up on the pick pick fence I've got three more of these handles to put in us and the perimeter fence will be done stay tuned and we'll figure out what the problem is with this fence charger when we do that we'll be ready for pigs so keep following along hit the like and subscribe button and stay tuned and like we say like to say here on mama bear's homestead and more keep on keeping on my friends